Hi, my name is Bob Grunia and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we are looking at the inside of the outside of one of Bin Juen Huang's cavitation systems. Uh, the copper pipe heat exchanger. And this is up here, the carbon tape that is holding it onto the sample holder and this was cut and cut. So it is a quarter section of the pipe and we're going to look at the inside area here and see what we can find. So put that onto fast so we can move it around a bit. I'm going to zoom into this area here. Okay, so this is the cut edge. So we'll come in from that to this area on the copper. So there does appear to be some thing going on here. What we don't know, but shall see what we shall see. What is it that's going on here? Try and get some focus. Okay, there we go. What are we looking at here? This degraded? degraded? It's a little triangular bit. Intriguing. What are these? We look at the secondary electrons here and see if we can see something a little bit more crisp. On let's do an image there. See if it pulls out some geometry. It's getting a bit dark. Hmm. Yeah, it's absorbing those electrons. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work, is it? Let's try it now. This is the shiny inside of the copper pipe. Very consistent elements. So this may just be copper oxide that we're looking at here. Let's dump that across and see what we see. Let's take a particular spot, this one fairly regular here, and see what we have. Not a large amount of counts per second, but definitely got copper there. Don't think there's rhodium there. Don't think there's tantalum. 
it is, it would appear to be <laughs> copper oxide. CPU, Cu2O. Now, what would pr produce a abundance of oxygen? Well, maybe if water was being split and the hydrogens were being captured somehow, maybe fusing into oxygen to make oxygen 17, so that then there was free oxygen in the water being produced, and maybe this would lead to the Cu2O. If we were to analyze this copper oxide, would it turn out to be copper heavy oxide? That is to say the O16 is more O17 than normal or O18 than normal? That's the question. There's a regular array of these kind of chunks taken out of it, doesn't it? See? Okay, definitely quite similar everywhere. So when you see this, it's, it's to do with the charging on the crystal. And if these are copper one oxide, cuprous oxide, that is what we are looking at here. Normally, this is kind of like red in color. I imagine this is going to be pretty much the same. We'll actually have a look at this crystal here, that's what it is. Still not getting a lot of counts. Might have to look at a different area. Don't really see a guy the video on there. Huh. Just copper and oxygen. Cu2O, almost exactly. Now, is it a different composition where we see this area here? That's the question. Ah, I know what's going wrong. I've got it on freeze. So it's not getting a lot of samples because I'm not actually scanning it. <laughs> That'll be why. So we'll try that again. My bad. One, there, quiet.
sorry, cuprous oxide. Cu2O. And there we go. So again, cuprous oxide. Go down the bottom and see if we get better counts. So actually we'll go in the middle bit bit here first. And that needs a down side more focusing. Pretty much the same story everywhere. Hmm. Smoother there. Maybe it's just out of focus. It looks like it's out of focus. Don't expect this to be much different. Better number of counts here. Interesting. This has a whole bunch of phosphorus in it. Mm hmm. One more here, but I think it's pretty much the same. Yeah, copper oxide. It's just that first one here which has the phosphorus. see what else we can find. Definitely have these kind of areas here, 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 like over here, here. Now could these be where you have impacted solitons? Certainly looks like it might be. 
This one has a center point here, this one has a center point here, this one has a center point here, this one has a center point here. They all look a similar size, so that's 50 microns. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, so they're 5. So they all seem to be around about 15, 20 microns across maybe. They're very similar in structure. Yeah. They're quite fascinating. So could these be solitons that were generated at the main place of cavitation and they've travelled through here and they've got caught. Yeah, these are quite interesting. These are structures. Definite structures. Uh, yes. There's a collection of those. Ah, oh. <laughs> you don't know what I was talking about, do you? I was talking about these. Little kind of florets, all the same kind of size. So there's a triangular section in the middle. Again, sort of triangular. But are these little whirlpools, vortices? Or are they ones that crashed into the surface? I think we need to look a bit deeper. We are going to have a quick look at these. We'll have a quick look at that. No, I don't think that's Samarium. I don't think that's Tantalum either. Definitely phosphorus. Interesting. <clears throat> what is that? So it's 8.78 mass normalized, but atomic normalized. It's still 8.84, 8.9, it's nearly 9. I think I'm going to do a area on that. Let's see what happens when we do this. Interesting, it's definitely got that phosphorus core to it. Phosphorus. Hmm. No. Interesting. See much carbon there, really. Well, 
deuteron and copper 63 goes to phosphorus plus sulfur 34. That what's going on? So the thing is, nitrogen 15 and oxygen 16 will fuse to phosphorus 31, and nitrogen 14 plus oxygen 17 will fuse to Phosphorus 31. We know there's oxygen there. Is there nitrogen in any meaningful sense? Not really. <laughs> concentration there but not really so I think we can stop that stop that so the question I have is are these similar let's have a look Definitely looks like it's got a vortical nature to it. Well, looky here. On the inside of this copper, it has these toroidal florets. Mm -hmm. uh, consistent sizes with a core and these radial kind of bits around the outside, mm -hmm. these projections. Yeah. And whilst this is almost entirely copper oxide, these have a high concentration of uh, phosphorus. If you look here, um, here phosphorus, eight and a half, eight point six percent phosphorus, uh -huh. relative to by mass, normalized, sixty percent of copper. So it's cuprous oxide, Cu2O, yeah. uh, with nearly 6% uh, phosphorus. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the reactions, th these are known reactions with ball lightning, it's the reaction between isotopes of nitrogen and oxygen. Mm -hmm. Where's the nitrogen? We don't see the nitrogen there, but it could be dissolved in the air or it could be synthesized during the CNO process. Is his system vented? No, it's pressurized, isn't it? It's pressurized and he vents off any gases. Oh, so the oxygen comes, the uh, nitrogen comes out. Ma yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. We'd yeah. have to. Yeah, I mean, the, the nitrogen in the... Um, I mean, what pressure is he running at? It's quite high, but then it gets a lot yeah, higher so in the cavitation. In the yeah, but like the, the, the partial pressure of nitrogen in water from the atmosphere is the highest. So even with his deionization process, nitrogen will be coming through, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. However, the CNO process produces nitrogen, if that's going on, or something similar or akin to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's the fact that they're, they're these regular florets that have a quantization. Yeah. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, and they definitely look like they're vortical. Now, the question is, they aren't all arranged flat onto the surface. This one is slightly at an angle, but these ones are at a steep angle. Yeah, you can see the shadowing. Yeah, so it, it, I, I'm wondering whether these are produced elsewhere. They're traveling around in the water stream, and then they're colliding in the side here. Yeah, or they could be growing off of the copper. They could be, but they're, they're, this, is, this, this is flat on the surface, Yeah. right? But these are... At angles. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, it's like the, the the structure is there. The vortex yeah, is. Yeah, random stuff happens. And this oh yeah, yeah. Running for hundreds of hours, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So I, what I want to do is look at more samples of these, yeah. and uh, you know, see how many are flat on and so forth. But it's 
it's very consistent. You see the the phosphorus here is it's not around the outside. It's yeah. it's basically on the floret, like the previous one that yeah, I. It's an interesting phenomenon. Look, look, it's <laughs> that's yeah. the phosphorus on the floret. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Copper's around the outside. Phosphorus. And oxygen is co-located with the phosphorus. Uh -huh. So it's not seeing the nitrogen that's interesting, but the, at least the oxygen. Yeah. Does he clean the system with phosphoric acid, maybe? He, it's a common so, metal pickling solution. You know? Well, here's the thing is um, I asked him about this because sometimes phosphorus is used to treat copper. Yes. In order... Uh, that it's anti-corrosion and stuff, mm -hmm. but he says he uses a type that doesn't have any phosphorus in it. Okay. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. But regardless, it's not at all in the other areas. There's no phosphorus there, and they are in regularly sized toroidal shaped structures. Yeah. Could be. In, it's an interesting thing which was unexpected actually. Another one here. Is it a resonant area? So there's a whole bunch of them. Let's come out, see if we see someone in a broader area. Focus again.
one is that? Is this one of those florets? More of these florets, I think.
Ahnung. Wow, that didn't work, did it? <laughs>
actually look at the cut copper edge here. This was cut with diamonds, I think. Lots of contamination from the cutter, cutting process. This was the inside of the outside of one of Benjamin Huang's reactors. Should be mostly copper. No phosphorus in there. <laughs> Well, there you go. I think that is it. So thank you very much for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.